Well, we're changing out the wick in this Perfection 1550 oil heater. Basically uses diesel fuel and kerosene. It can use both. Because it's a cotton wick and it's an old design. So, got a wick here. Changed it out a few times before. I didn't even change the wick from last year. I think I changed it late in the year. And uh, I've been using the same wick so far this winter. I don't use it every day. I use it probably 50% of the time because I'm in... Uh, North Central Florida it doesn't get extremely cold down here. But you can see it's burning towards. I was able to pull up the front of the wick, get some more. You can actually pull these wicks up a little further and make them last longer if needed. And uh, because of the way they're designed, or um, let's see if we get it out of here. You see, they're riveted. Some of them are riveted. Some of them are. This one's got rivets right here. There's a rivet right here. And a rivet right down there. Actually, if you took that rivet out of there and you moved it up maybe you know, three quarters of an inch, it still has enough where it's down in the bottom where it's, it's enough to pick up you know, the oil and wick it up to the top. That's why it's called a wick. You can put a new rivet in there. Just take a standard pop rivet and put it in there. And then you would still have some more wick. So, in other words, these, this part is the part that goes down into the oil tank. And usually it's flapped up like that. And so, I mean, you can actually probably make these wicks last another 50% longer. You can probably get another, you can bring it up a little bit. Because it would still be enough where it's sitting on the bottom of the oil tank. You know, if you needed to do this, if you didn't have a wick, you could do this. Just want to point that out. You can actually. Sometimes they don't even have rivets in there. They're just like stuck on there with little prongs. But you can actually take these rivets out, drill them out, and move this up a little bit, and put new rivets in it. Or even just take a needle and thread and thread it through there. As long as it, because this doesn't burn down here, as long as it keeps the wick from going up too high. You know, it doesn't pull, in other words, it keeps it in line with this. Because this is, this is to adjust the wick. This is, works with this. It's got a little wheel. Works down in there, I'll show you what it is. So, on this thing, you know, it just pops open like this, and you know, that's how you would fill it because you'd have to take this out to fill it. And this one's got a lot of oil in it, still a lot of diesel fuel. So, um, yeah, it's already cooled down, it cools down pretty quick. So, you could see. You know, the wick has been burned down pretty far. Again, you, you can see the ratchet back in here. See the ratchet? It goes along. That's why when you install these, you have to have it with, you know, that ratchet wheel, whatever you want to call it, rides along there. See that? And to get it out, all you got to do is go to the full extent and then uh, pull it up. You, you can use some pliers or something like that. Pull it up and it just comes right the hell out. Do it off camera. Just get some pliers up here. Vice grips. Just pull the freaking thing right the hell out. All right, in this case, I just used a screwdriver. I put it down in there. You can see it was easier than using the pliers. I said, whoa, let me think. <laughs> and it comes out. And it's all full of oil because this thing is still... But you can see it, this goes way down in there. So if you took out that rivet and that rivet and you pulled it up you know, three quarters of an inch it's still got enough to get way down to the bottom and you can you know make the wick last 50 percent longer so now the thing is to put them in you just got to make sure this is all spread out and at this you can use either side this goes with that ratchet wheel down there Now to get these started, I found it best not to push down on the top, but to take the bottom and pull, you know, with one hand on this side, one hand on that side, with your thumb like this, because it pushes the material so it doesn't get caught on the top of the, I don't know, the cylinder, whatever you want to call that. In other words, try to push it down, it'll the key the material will gather up and it'll get caught. Pull it with the material, two hands, one hand on this side like that. One hand on that side, and you can work it down. It goes on really easy. Then these, 
as you push these down, you got to take these and stick them in here. Okay, and you got to watch, you know, it doesn't get, in, in, you know, mess up your float. Or, in other words, this is your float for your fuel. You don't want it over that. You want to spread it out. And uh, this, you can see this is like the wheel. The wheel over here has got to be in line with this. That's why this split is like that right there. But once you get it down a little further, okay, we don't want to do this one-handed. You can pretty much do it one-handed. It's not that hard to do. See? Then to start it, to start it, you got to push down. You turn this. You know, maybe push down and turn it a little bit like that until it engages. Then it's going to go up and down. Again, I use the screwdriver. I put it right on top of this notch right here. And I tap the top of the screwdriver with my hand. And that got it just past the point where it can engage. So now you can see. There it goes, right? And then, when you first light it up, what you want to do is <laughs> put some diesel fuel on here or kerosene, whatever. And then uh, light it and burn off these things like this, this garbage up on the top because it'll have funny flames. It'll, it'll burn even. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I always keep this little piece of metal here because it makes it easier to open this up, even though it's not that hard to do. It's got quite a bit of fuel in it. I'm going to put some more in there. But that's uh, basically it, and uh, this thing has actually saved me a lot of money on heat. Uh, I'm going to get a couple more wicks. I got those two wicks probably a couple years ago. Eh, maybe last year. Maybe last year, and I changed one of them last year, and then uh, I was using the one from last year for half this winter already. So this thing has really been great. It's a really damn good heater. doesn't have anti-tip-over protection, but... You know, it's, it's not a heater that would be easily tipped over anyway. I mean, you really, I mean, I don't know what you would do to knock it over. I mean, you'd have to really slam it. It wouldn't do it by accident, that's for sure. Well, she's all lit up. <laughs> it's working fine. i got to order a couple more wicks. But two more wicks, I think it'll last, I think a wick actually lasts about a full season. Just about. But then, if you're in a more wintry environment unlike north central florida you might go through two or three wicks but still it's pretty cheap it's pretty cheap and it's portable heat not dependent upon electricity it's another advantage you could be outside um in a shed or a garage take this thing with you if you're working on your car doing something or maybe you're trying to start your snow blower up or something and you want to get some more heat in that garage before you go start it up I don't know, something like that. So, uh, it's handy because it's very portable. And since it's the old style, um, you know, I can use diesel fuel in it, which is very handy because you know, a lot of people have trucks that use diesel fuel, so you don't have to keep two types of diesel fuel around. And if you siphon a little bit, if you say you got a truck that's got a 40 or 50 gallon tank and you fill it up, well, you can't go nowhere. Well, you got yourself like a 30-day supply of fuel to heat up with this because um, I don't know this thing will this thing will run a long time on one of these tanks and it's not a gallon in here it's uh, I don't know what it is but if I don't put it up too high it'll run um, geez I don't know it'll run about if I have it up high it runs about 10 hours if I have it down low I've had it I've had it run 15 16 hours and it's still at pretty good amount of not a real lot but it wasn't anywhere near the danger zone where it would burn up the wick or anything so you know you can fill them up twice a day and run it all, all day and I think what is that maybe I don't know what holes in that it's in that pot but it's less than a gallon it's way less than a, I think maybe one gallon would last you all day so if you got a truck that's got 40 50 gallon tank in it if you took 30 gallons out of that you siphoned it out with this thing, you could run this all month. Pretty good survival tool for winter time in case your electricity goes out due to a blizzard and a tree falls on a freaking pole or something like that. 
I think these are way better than this, those um, uh, newer ones with the electronic stuff and all the fancy tip -over. The less, I know it doesn't have tip over protection, but it's another thing that can go wrong. This thing is very simple. I don't know how old this is. I got it used, and uh, I know the, I know the patent is from 1913. It's probably it might be close to 100 years old. I don't know when they stopped making these in the 1930s. I don't know when they stopped making them, but um, the thing is, it's simple. There's really not much to go wrong with it. And again, you could take that wick and you know. If that wick was totally shot where there's nothing left on it. You could take out the rivets and pull it up a little bit. And you could actually do that a bunch of times as long as, you know, if, it, if the end part of the wick that goes into the fuel, like this part, if it starts getting really too short, um, just don't run it down that low. Run it down to a quarter tank. That's all. You could still, it'll still, you could still make this wick last a lot longer. You know, that's good for an emergency, but you're better off changing it if you need to. And you can use this wick material for the uh, oil lanterns. You can just cut them, cut them in strips, and it makes it, it, it just, they're just little strips like this. You can use them in the oil lanterns, like, uh, I'll show you what I got here. This oil lantern here, you know, it has a little wick in here. I don't know if you can barely see that. Maybe not, because of the glare, but... There's a wick in there, and it's a thin, it's not as thick, but you can make, you can make a bunch of those wicks. Not that these wear out quick, but you can make them from the other wick, which is good to have too. It's good, good little tip. This is good old technology too.